Just watering my plants off the big cool tower. What's going on everybody? It is Cam here with Easy Work Acres and today we're going to show you how to make this super awesome water collection tower with a garden shed on the side to be able to store all your garden tools and stuff like that, buckets, manure, all that stuff that I have stored out here on this and be able to collect rainwater to water our garden. So this is going to be an awesome project because why not use rainwater to water your garden instead of the water hose that's on your house. It's not only going to save you money, but it's rainwater. It's perfect for plants. It's exactly what your plants prefer. So let's get into it. Now, before we get started real quick, I wanted to just point out that this bottom layer right here in the initial part of the video, I hadn't put this on yet. This was something that we added after the fact, which will be shown in the video. But at the beginning, I'm showing how to level the base and things like that. And that is all done the same for this part right here. I just wanted to clear that up if you were super confused why this looks slightly different than the original leveling that I did at the beginning of this video. All right, so first off, we picked up this water tank off of Facebook Marketplace, about 50 bucks. It's food grade. I already pressure washed and sprayed it out because it did have a little bit of algae buildup and stuff in it. So we went ahead and pressure washed this out. And the first thing we're gonna do to prevent that algae buildup is spray paint it. So we're gonna spray paint this with a uh, solid coat of this, like uh, I guess it bonds to plastic or whatever. We're just doing like a light tan color and basically so that sun isn't penetrating this container, which can promote more algae growth. Now that doesn't mean there's not gonna be any at all, but this can slow it down or at least bring it down to a manageable amount to where I don't have to spend every beginning of every season spraying a heavy coat of algae off the sides of this. Um, so that's what we're gonna start with, giving this a paint job real quick. All right, so we have got it painted, just one good solid coat, and that plastic bonding spray um, really seems to cover it pretty well. And just to show it again, it's just a Rust-Oleum, two times Ultra Cover. It's like six bucks a can. So I just got three cans instead of four. And let me say, it came down to literally the last drop of spray to cover the whole thing. Um, so if you're iffy on if you're gonna run out or not, or you are painting on a windy day, you might need an extra can, because uh, this literally just just covered the last spot on the top um, once we got all the sides sprayed down. So it's covered, it's ready to go. Let's get to building this thing. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna be doing is leveling it off. So I got some cinder blocks and stuff out here. I got some old flat bricks here that we're gonna be using. Um, and basically just gonna get this level so that we have something good and easy to work with. As well as if your water tank isn't level, it's not gonna be able to fill up as much as it could. Because if it's at an angle, obviously the water is gonna be trying to level itself. And then it's gonna be hitting the top sooner than it should. So we're gonna level it off real quick using the bricks and pavers and cinder blocks and get the pallets down and then we'll get moving from there. All right, so we got it leveled off. Um, I will get another brick because I want a little more support under that middle there, not just on these outside corners, which I highly recommend you do. And then, you know, it's leveled off all the way around. So essentially the goal here, not only is to level it, but it's also good to, if you're gonna be doing it this way with a pallet as your base, then to get the pallet off the dirt because you don't want that sitting on the ground. It'll eventually rot out and then the base that you built will be for nothing. Um, so getting it leveled off will definitely be something that is really important to do, but also to just simply get it out of the dirt, get it on some bricks and some pavers. All right, next thing, stack another pallet on because I just wanted a little more height um, from the base of this thing. It's where there's a little more drop off from the spigot. I don't want that spigot coming out with the hose laying right there on the ground. So I'm doubling it up. You could even do three or four if you really wanted to stack it up like a tower. Um, but there is a base pallet that is actually attached to the tank too. So it'll be up a little bit higher than this. Um, but now that this is on here, this is level and we're going to go ahead and put the water tank on so I can start taking some measurements to build this thing out. All right. So we got the tank on there. We got it leveled and now we have our base to work with now i would like to have a place to also store tools so obviously i'm going to be using this to water the garden the field and stuff but i would like a place to actually hook up my shovels my rakes my hoe all that stuff um, because we're out here in this garden bed and these garden beds this field and stuff all the time and we're always having to carry the shovels and rakes and stuff back and forth um, so i'm actually going to be making the roof wider than this tank like so this tank is width wise only about 40 inches it's 48 inches deep but it's 40 inches wide and i'm actually going to make the roof a whole six foot wide which takes up two whole 
um, like metal panels um, because metal panels are about three foot wide. So I'll use two of them to make a six foot wide um, rooftop here and then basically have roof cover for me to hook up tools and stuff to where they can stay out here and stay out of the weather at the same time. Alrighty, so the first thing that I'm gonna be doing here is attaching this two by four to these pallets at the bottom, running up on this front edge here. And I'm gonna have this about seven foot long. Um, I'll let you know what the measurement is from ground to, or how much from the top of this to there is once I get it attached. Um, but essentially I want it seven foot at the front and six and a half foot at the back. So there'll be like a six inch drop from front to back. Um, and then that's also going to allow plenty of room from the top of this. Um, both on the front and the back end to leave plenty of room from the gutter to the pipe that runs into it because if you ha have this roof too tight you're not going to have enough room for your pipe to run off the roof and then into your tank and then you'll have to be doing something ridiculous like drilling a hole in the side of a perfectly good tank um, so leave yourself plenty of headroom above this to your roof Alright, so the next board I'm going to be attaching is this bottom cross board here. Basically just to go from the outside of there to the outside of the other pole that I'm going to be putting up right here. Now the length of this board is 67 inches. Now the reason being, so if you're going to do it this way and you want to try and make it to the exact scale of what we're doing, the reason I'm making this 67 inches is because you have to account for the thickness of your 2x4 that's going to be going to the outside of this on your roof and the same on this side. So the thickness of your two by four on your frame for your roof. And for the fact that even though a width of a, like a, a metal panel is three foot, there's gonna be a two inch overlap when you lap those together. So you gotta take off the two inches there. So you're taking five total inches off between the thickness of the two by four on each side and the overlap of your metal. So that comes out to 67 inches, an extra five inches off of a total six foot. Alrighty, so we got our uprights, we got some cross beams here. Now, a quick reminder too is those cross beams need to have support under them with ground contact. So, if you look close, there is a brick under that one. That one doesn't quite reach, and I'm gonna have to get more pavers. So, when this is all done, I'll definitely have to get some pavers on my way home from work or something to make sure that's supported. Otherwise, your roof is gonna sag because you can't just depend on that to hold it up. It'll hold up for a while, but it'll sag. Um, two, is make sure that those are level as well because if those are level then you'll be able to just pull off of this two by four to match those uprights right there so like i said that one is seven foot long and that one's six and a half foot long that should be the same exact thing on this side going to the bottom of that two by four right, right there because it's at the bottom of that two by four and it's level um so should be able to easily just cut another seven foot and six and a half foot upright for this side and then we'll start that outer uh, framework for the roof all right so we got the uprights on this side now so this is where we're at we're gonna put another 67 inch board across both of those uprights at the top. And then we'll get to making the boards that go down the side and we'll start slapping this roof on. All right, quick little tip. If you are somebody that builds stuff by yourself all the time, these clamps will save your daggone life. Um, so basically, since I don't have anybody helping me hold anything up, I can throw this clamp up right here and that will hold the other end of the board while I get this other side screwed off and I can get around Two start yourself a screw because it makes it a whole lot easier than trying to pin this in the right spot and then get your screw started and everything else but i can basically set that end on that clamp down there and then i'm good to go as far as trying to get it screwed off over here and now i can go to the other end and get that end screwed off all right so cross beams are up and down this side is going to be right at 50 inches so something i forgot to mention when i was putting that front base on choke up about an inch and what that'll do 
is, hold on, let me get up there and I'll show you. What that does is if you choke up, you don't need to choke up on the back end because that doesn't matter. But if you choke up on the front end, then it won't have anything sticking up for the roof to hit. But if you go flush, see how that overhangs right there? Then you'd have to trim that off, which is totally fine. But if you just choke up an inch, then you don't have to worry about that and then everything is flush. All right, that's all up there. And now I'm gonna put one stretcher down the middle here just so that there is a middle brace to screw the roof to at the top. And then we will be ready to rock. And that should again be 67 inches, just like the two outside boards. All right, so we got that last cross beam in there for the roof. So now we're ready to throw the roof on. I have some scrap metal right here. Um, so this is a 10 foot long sheet um, that normally, I think they come in 16 foot or longer. Um, maybe you can get them as short as 10 feet, but this is 10 feet. Um, so that's kind of what I based the scale off of this was what I had available as far as metal too. Uh, so I'm gonna cut this down to two five foot pieces and that should spread the whole width and have plenty of length to cover front to back with overhang. Um, now, what I'm gonna be cutting this with, you can use just plain old metal snips, um, but I'm telling you, it is worth the investment for this baby right here. It is a cheap Harbor Freight tool. I wanna to say it was no more than 50 bucks at best, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of projects with metal, this thing will save you some time. Basically, it just snips right on down through the metal, makes it a lot easier without having to beat up your hands or fight it. Metal's cut, time to put it on the roof. All right, so I have the roof on dry fit. So what I mean by that is I didn't screw it off yet. I just got it adjusted and everything. I have perfectly even overhang off the edges. Now front to back, there is more gonna be more overhang on the front than there is the back, mainly for the sake that I need to make sure that I don't put too much overhang off the back for the sake of the gutter. So that's why I have it dry fit right now, because I am gonna try and slide this back as much as I can without the water just like blasting clean past the gutter. Um, but I want to get as much overhang as I can off the back so that I can get some off the front because like I said, this was a 10 foot sheet and I cut it down to five feet and I didn't really want to have to waste metal for no reason over a couple of inches on this. Um, so I'm going to slide it back as much as I can. Um, that way there's not just a gigantic overhang off of the front and not wasting it because these are five foot lengths and this overall total structure is only about four foot deep. All right, I got the gutter up. I think I'm happy with the overhang all the way around. It looks like I got about a two inch overhang on the sides here. I'd say that's probably close to a six to eight inch overhang right there, which still, still should be totally fine. I'm not really worried about wind ripping on that too much or anything, as well as the reason I even faced it this direction is because most of my wind comes in this way. So hopefully it won't be catching it going that way. Let's get this roof screwed off. Roof and gutter are on, screwed off, and now we are moving on to the drain so that we can start filling this bad boy up. All right, so we are at the drain part and I am using PVC pipe. Uh, now PVC pipe just seems to be a little more flexible and I had a bunch of two inch left over from building the house. Um, so basically got two elbows, PVC pipe, and this allows me to like move this in any direction I need to from the downspout, which works a little bit better than actual metal downspout. Now, I did happen to make the exact mistake that I said don't make, which is make this too tight to where you can't fit your drain in there because I also have a two to three inch adapter, but luckily my genius wife said, just trim the cone back. This is normally like this tall and I just trimmed it back and now there's room to fit and this will all go in here. So basically, you know, put one in, in the hole other in there and then this will all go in there together and it will go straight into this like cone right here this two to three inch adapter and then drain down into the drain at the top and that's all you need and that has down slope so i've already checked and it does have down slope from there to there so it should drain into there and we managed to save it by literally like an inch i was off an inch so if you were doing this exact design i would make this probably i don't know you might go seven and then seven and a half in the front instead of six and a half and seven that way you just have plenty of room to work with i mean it could just be a couple inches if you want to adjust i mean i don't know six and nine inches at the back or something instead 
whatever. But give yourself a little bit more room than what's originally on this from start to finish to leave more room if you're gonna do this PVC pipe. All right, so now that we got the pipe hooked up, which all I did to mount this was zip tie it. Um, it has already got a slope because it's on a higher bar at the back, that middle bar is lower. So it's got a nice slope going down. All it took was some zip ties and it's in there so tight that it can't come out of there if it tried. So we're gonna do a little dry run. We're gonna pour some uh, water over the front and get this thing to drain down into the tank. So let's see how it goes. Should be fine. Climb this ladder with the buckets. Looks like everything's working like it should. So we've seen that everything drains fine off the top, straight down into this pipe and everything, and water is coming out. No leaks anywhere where they shouldn't be, and no leaks down here, and we have water flow. Um, now, what we're about to get into is the shelving part. It's where we're gonna build some, uh, like a rack to hang my garden tools and stuff in. Now, I'm gonna be putting beams just like this right in here on both sides and that will really sturdy this thing up so it'll be almost like as if i didn't have the add on here and i just had you know that post and then another one right here and it was only the width of this tank if you were to want to build one that's that size it's almost the same thing i just gave myself extra room so that i could have cover over my garden tools so that's what we're about to get into next all right so we're about to throw these extra uprights in for the rack and we are actually going to be laying them flat this way instead of this way so that I can use the scrap that I cut off and there's plenty of room for me to attach on the face of these boards. So that's why I'm gonna lay them flat instead of the other direction, um, which it will actually match the other side and it allows me to screw it there at the bottom to those pallets down there. All right, so what I've done here is I've laid out this two by four and I've gotten the most common tools that we use in our garden, which is our shovels, our mini shovel, our hoe. We have like, I don't even know what that's called, honestly. A little rake, I guess a mini rake, our trowel, and then the hard rake. Um, and basically laying it out with the necks laid on the board so I can make marks and stuff and make sure that the width is all gonna work. And I've already made sure to take measurements for headroom to be able to get this stuff in and out of there and everything's looking good. So what I'm gonna be doing here is making marks on the board and then I'll start attaching some pegs. So as far as making pegs on the board, um, I'm making marks, which I plan on making these pegs a little longer since I plan on having more than one shovel hanging in this area. But basically all I'm doing is making marks where the neck of this shovel is gonna fit in here nice and easy. I don't wanna have to like fight for it to get it in there, but gonna peg around all these spots here. Now, as far as like the garden trowel and stuff, these I'm just gonna be putting a screw in because these are small and they have a handle hole to where I can slide it right over a screw and it should be no issue at all to hang those up that way. Um, but now I have marks on my board for where to put my pegs to start hanging all of these up. So just a closer look here, just made marks and then I'll be putting basically a two by four peg on each side of that. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do from there. So actually after dry fitting it, I think I'm just gonna make them all six inches. It seems like both shovels will fit on there fine with plenty of space for a third shovel if I wanted to with the six inch blocks. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is get these blocks going. So I had the blocks just dry fit where I wanted them. And like I said, I made my marks to where I want the two by fours to go. And from here, I'm just gonna be putting screws in the back of this two by four. I'm gonna use three inch screws because I want plenty of screw in the two by four. I'll get a screw in here and that is started and ready to rock. And then basically I'm just screwing into the back of this block and, and that is what I'll do all the way down, which I'll probably throw another screw in this because I don't want that constantly turning on me, but essentially screw it in the back. And then once I put it up there, it'll have all my pegs on there. So we're going to run through these real quick and knock these out. All right. So. We got our pegboard put together and now we are going to hang it up. So I'm gonna get one corner tacked off and then I'm gonna get a level on it 
to tack the other side off. I already have screws in the end. And by the way, anytime you're putting a uh, screw in the board this close to the edge, highly recommend pre-drilling the holes anyways, just to keep it from splitting. But anyways, just gonna hang this bad boy up and we'll be ready to get some tools in here. And we got them hung. It looks nice. And it's gonna be out of the weather here to where we can have these outside at our garden beds, at our sunflower field and everything here. And we have everything we need right here. All right, so we have our hose hanger on there. And I even put a couple screws up here so I can hang my little sprayer wand. There is storage everywhere on this baby. And I'm sure I'll find other ways to keep adding to this. Now, one thing I wanna show you that um, I made a mistake on, but at the same time, I feel like it might have saved me, or not saved me, but it may it brought up a, a good fix for it, um, and something that I think actually is going to work better for me in the long run. Now, if you see here, I have this like short hose in here. I ordered the wrong bib to, for a um, or a spigot. It's a three quarter, and for some reason, I thought I had three quarter hoses. I got you know once again should have just went outside and looked at my hose before I placed the order. Um, but it comes with a couple different um, hookups and adapters and stuff. So it does have the three quarter inch, which then has like the piece that goes into the hose. So I made myself this little bitty short hose that has a five eighths end on it to where I can screw on. Now, though this was just like a fix for my mistake on ordering, I think this is actually gonna work better for us because this, if your tank is like what I have, this is pretty recessed back here and I feel like I would eventually just start wearing out the neck of this hose constantly um, if I pulled any tension on it or anything. And the head of this is really big. So trying to fit it in here to get it screwed is kind of tough because it's back there. Whereas the adapter they give you is really thin and it's really easy to get up in there and screw in. And then this is left and it makes it way easier for me to attach and detach my hose from here and not have to like try and get all the way up in here to get my hose on. So. It was a mistake, but I think it actually is gonna work out better that way. Last thing to do is to test spray this baby, which we're gonna need some rain. So when it rains, this thing fills up. I'm gonna get the spraying out here and you're gonna see how awesome this thing is. Alrighty, it has been some weeks since we have done our last video on putting this thing together. And we are gonna hit you with some updates that we're gonna make in order to improve the functionality of this thing. So number one, you might notice all these weeds and they're all growing up through the pallets and all that other stuff. So we're gonna take care of this to where this is no longer an issue anywhere in the future. And we'll get to that. Two is that this tower is actually slightly downhill from our garden. And even though it is slightly downhill, it is stacked up high enough to meet the level of the garden and the raised beds and stuff, but you don't want it to be level with your garden. You want it to be at higher than your garden so that it drops and you get the water pressure you're looking for to spray. So not only are we gonna move this, but we're actually gonna stack it up even higher. I'm gonna move it up here to where I'm actually uphill from the garden now. We've been uphill from the field back here, so we were able to use it to water some of the sunflowers as well as some of the corn I planted down the side of that field right there. So we've been able to use it for that, but not really great for the garden, and that's exactly what we built it for. So we're gonna move it uphill, and we're gonna stack it up. Now, part of the reason it's been weeks since we decided to like get this thing updated, we've been on like, um, uh, like we were on like a three week drought. So super perfect timing for building a water tank than to get hit with a drought as soon as you get it done. So I actually had to fill this thing up with about 50 gallons or so of water um, from the water hose to get an accurate test on the water pressure and feeling how this thing is gonna work out. So we did that and it just wasn't coming out at the pressure that I'd like it to. So we're gonna move it uphill, stack it up higher, fix the weed issue up here, as well as lay in a floor and everything inside that storage area. Because we've also found that obviously we had buckets and soil bags and stuff that we were storing in the bottom and I would like those to be up off the ground and out of the dirt. So we're gonna be upgrading it that way. And then lastly, is something I hadn't shown yet, is that I wrapped all the way around, similar to a pole barn, with this middle bar here, all the way around, and that also makes this far more sturdy. So, overall, about to make it higher, extend out the floor on the bottom to where there's no more grass growing through, 
as well as move it uphill and we should get a much better response from the water pressure coming out of this thing in order to water our garden. All right, so before I even get moving the tank over, the first thing I'm gonna do that is gonna help with those weeds is I'm gonna get some plastic down on the new spot that I'm gonna be putting this. Um, so basically this is just a big sheet of like, I think this, I don't even know how many mil this is. It's pretty thick though but you don't necessarily have to use this specific plastic. You can use a weed barrier roll if you have that available. I mean, honestly, you could probably use some thick trash bags or something to lay down. It's just to keep things from growing up. So basically I'm gonna lay this out. This is much bigger than the space I need. And once I get it here, I'll cut off the excess after the fact. Um, so I'm gonna get the plastic down and then the same rules applies. All I'm gonna do is start putting some bricks down and stuff for leveling and then go ahead and get my next base layer of pallets on that I'm gonna be using to raise this up a little bit higher. Now, as far as the new pallets that I'm gonna be putting down to raise it up, I want the pallet to run the whole span of both the water tank and out past where the overhang and my storage is. I have this really long pallet. Basically, when I cut it in half, it's gonna be more than the length necessary for the actual tank and the shed itself. But you could just use regular pallets to raise this thing up and then cut one normal pallet in half and that'll take up that two foot overhang section that has the shed so you can use basically one and a half pallets to make it the whole span of the entire floor at the base so i'm going to go ahead and cut this in half and then we'll get that stacked on there with some leveling bricks and stuff to get us level and then we'll move the tank on top now if you recall i said something about if i ever needed to replace the tank or move it it would be easy to do so so like I said, since I didn't screw this off in here, I can now slide this tank right out of here so that I can move this whole framework much more easily. All right, so we have our double stacked base. And like I said, this is actually a little longer than the actual whole entire, you know, hut thing here itself. So it's gonna overhang a little bit, Bye. but got the plastic down, got it leveled, got it stacked up. Let's get this thing on there. All righty, we got this bad boy moved up on some higher stacks. Let's give it a paint job and give it a test run. All righty, we got her all painted up. We got everything on our racks and stuff. We got our tobacco sticks in there, all that stuff. It's looking nice, happy with it. It's not exactly the stain color we would have went with, but we went with the cheapest exterior stain we could find. So let's kick this thing on and see how it does. So I did just go ahead and throw in, I don't know, it looks like uh, maybe 50-ish gallons in it. Um, just off of our water hose because obviously I wanted to be able to show you all how it works. Now we have had rain. We did have a drought of about three weeks, but we did have rain and it did give us about 50 gallons across two different rains. Um, both those rains roughly around two inches of rain and that gave us 50 gallons. So two inch rain gives you 25 gallons just about with that um, on that five foot by six foot roof, which is to be expected. So let's take a look at the other end of the hose here. All right, we're at the end of the hose. Just gonna flip it on and we have our shower head here and it looks like it's doing pretty good now i have figured out already just that the further i get from the tank obviously the further downhill i get the more this pressure increases which is really really good um and we still get like pressure up here like i can walk closer and still get pressure out but being that this is the further i get from the tank the more water pressure i get is good because this whole field that we have these sunflowers planted in and by the way like you can see them those those are big old sunflower stalks coming out and they're all through this field and sadly there's just a bunch of tall weeds right now but uh basically i'm going to continue making in-ground beds all the way down this hill so the further we get down the hill with this water tank the better and better it's going to get for us next year when we have this all as in-ground garden beds Alrighty, so that is about it as far as the water collection tower here. If you like the, vi the video, please like the video with that like button and subscribe to our channel. We would love to continue bringing you content. It is something we enjoy doing as well as we love the feedback that you guys give us in the comments. It gives us all kinds of really cool ideas to have right here on our farm. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.